victim. Please advise at this stage that you're leaving the meeting. For those Adherent for this meeting of the Clydesdale Area Committee held on the 7th of June 2023. So I can see that we have present Councillor Allison, Councillor Barker, Councillor Corbett, Councillor Gowland. We have apologies from Councillor Hamilton. We have present Councillor Horsham, Councillor Lambie, apologies from Councillor Lockhart. Um, we also have present Councillor Logan, Councillor Marge, Councillor McAllen, Councillor McClymont, Councillor Shearer. Um, and we also have various officers present today. I'll hand back to yourself, Chair. Thanks, Carol. Uh, so we've got declarations of interest, uh, number one on the agenda, and I have pre-notification of Councillor Marge for item 8B, and uh, she's known to the group, and Councillor Gowland, 8G, as a member. Any further declarations of interest? Don't see any hands, so that's fine. So we'll move on to the minutes of previous meeting, pages three to eight. They're submitted for approval. Are they a correct record? Seconded. Thank you. Uh, number three on the agenda is the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, a presentation by Station Commander Kenneth Kenny Stark and Lawrence Murphy. If you would like to start, thank you. Presentation on, please. Good afternoon and thank you for inviting us here today to provide a presentation on the Clydesdale Area Committee Report, performance for 2022 to 2023. Um, if you just move on to the next slide, please. So the purpose of the report is to give members of the SSLB an update with the activity that has been held within the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service Community Fire Station based out at Lanark. Community Fire Station, which has one whole time appliance and one on-call appliance. The priorities that we have are currently set out within our station plan and local area fire action plan. Um, as you can see there, reduction of dwelling fires, fire casualties, fatalities, deliberate fire setting, non-domestic property fires, road traffic collisions and UFAS unwanted fire alarm signals. Our fire framework ID on the right-hand side and our KPIs on the right-hand side are there for internal uh, use with our ClickView programme, but is also available through the Scottish Government website as well. Thank you. So within the all de deliberate primary fires, which is one B section there, as you can see, within the within each of the four localities within Clydesdale, east, north, south, and west, we've actually seen a reduction this year, um, 2022-2023, and this is due to the increased amount of community safety advocate and community safety initiatives that have been run by the station themselves. Although it is a low number, um, it still presents a risk to uh, public and property, and we've now focused a high school engagement programme, which is going to be used to educate students on antisocial fire-related behaviour, behavior, sorry, and encouraging them to report suspicious activity to either police, ourselves, or anyone other of our partners. We're currently working closely with our local authorities in South Lanarkshire and also Police Scotland. We've created really good links now with the community police officers within Lanark Fire Station and within Lanark Police Station as well, to ensure that if we notify, if we're out and about doing operational inspections or we're out doing community safety engagements, if we notice a large build-up of rubbish within the area, our quick links can now get that removed within a 24-hour period, which previously we did not have happening. So it's a real kind of success that we have around there. Amongst When you look at the numbers for the kind of area committal total for last year, 14 deliberate fires when the previous two years were in the kind of 20s is a success, and I'm quite happy to call it a success. But again, with working together, um, and keeping our community safe, I think we'll be able to continue to reduce it. Next one, please. Our second one, which is deliberate secondary fires, this comes round from bin fires and all other kinds of fires which aren't within a building. As you can see, we had 125 last year. And with a large period of warm weather, I think that's actually a success as well. When you look at the previous year, it's been up in the 140 odds too. It is a low number compared to other localities, which are in the kind of higher triple figure side and above, but again, Myself, it still represents a, a risk to the public and the safety around the area. So, again, we're continuing our, our high school engagement programmes. We're doing our anti, anti social behaviour programmes within there. We're encouraging them. We've also linked closely with ASN schools within the area too. And it's just this week, actually, that it's came to a close where we have had 
Children who are not engaging within the school, who have been removed from ASN schools, we've had them up at Lanark Community Fire Station within the community room, and we've been doing what's known as a fire reach outreach programme towards them. Fire reach outreach is not a thing that we cost back to the councils. It's something that since I became station commander and the head of community safety engagement that I've instigated myself, where we bring fire reach to those most that need within the area, as opposed to bring them in for a week. It does have its successes. Um, we're currently working with authorities and police again to make sure if there is a large build of rubbish where these fires do tend to come from are removed as soon as possible. But from the reports that I've had back from my community advocates that work within the area and my local authority liaison officer within the area, the recent outreach event with bringing the kids into the fire station has been a massive success. If you look at the accidental dwelling fires as well, and these tend to be caused by cooking. As you can see, we do have 46, which is, again, a lower number than 2021 to 22, but is higher than 2020 to 21 by a small period, with a three-year average be 46.8 fires within all of the localities. Clydesdale East has had a reduction. Um, Clydesdale North is steady. Clydesdale South, which does have a, a slight increase. So to try and combat this, what we've done is initiated a programme of home fire safety visits and risk recognition training to all of our partners to identify people who are high, at higher risk within the area, and to get referrals made to us from our partner agencies. It was highlighted that the amount of referrals that we were getting in from our partner agencies was significantly smaller than where it should be, to the point that back in December, we had four, four referrals out of all of Clydesdale within the area. We continued our risk hazard awareness training, where we bring people into Clydesmill, or we do it via Teams. We teach them what a home fire safety visit includes, and also other risks within the home to keep people safe and well. Since we've had that, Across Lanarkshire, in January, we had 94 referrals in. In February, 120, and in March, 162 referrals in. And these were the high-risk people that as firefighters and within the fire service, we would just not know who they are and where they are because we don't have that ability as social work and police and, and our ambulance service colleagues do. We are continuing to work with um, Health and Social Care Police Scotland, Ambulance Service and local housing teams to, to actually increase the amount of home fire safety visits. And the biggest thing that we like to put across is that our risk recognition training is free. It's free for everybody that's a frontline member of staff and also their managers so that they have um, an idea of what we're looking for. Within the Clydesdale area, we have now contacted and engaged with every single one of our partners, including all of our home care staff, both private and public. And again, it's free for both private and public who do have that area. We've got to move on to the next one. Our deliberate secondary fires. Oh, sorry, all accidental other ones. Sorry, I've skipped there. Our all accidental other building fires are industrial or commercial or derelict properties as well. As you can see from the last year's average, we are down to 16. However, it is up from obviously the kind of COVID pandemic year of 2020, 2021. Three year average though is down at 15. And again, it's, it's quite small numbers within the area because of the good engagement work that we are doing within the area as well. What we're doing, though, to try and combat it, to bring it down even further, is we've got, we're conducting post-fire audits by our fire safety auditing officers. We're trying to provide education, education and advice to business owners to stop the occurrences happening. And again, with us stopping us going out there, we're reducing blue light journeys, which reduces the road risk to, to users, and it also helps reduce our carbon footprint as well by not turning out an appliance at four miles to the gallon. Thank you. Our next one, and the biggest success... We've had no fatal fires at all for the past three years within the area. To me, that is fantastic on three fronts. One, the people within Clydesdale are safe. We know they're safe. We've not had any fatalities in there. We've not had a massive increase in budgetary risk towards um, other services as well involved at the end of a fire too. We've not put that massive mental health pressure on families or on other local services. And three, my firefighters haven't then had the mental health strain at the back of having to deal with a fatality. So non-fatal fire casualties, excluding precautionary checkups. So again, within Clydesdale East, we've had zero for 2021, 22, 23. Clydesdale North, we had three, although I've been informed that they, are, they were um, not as serious as we thought they were, which is fantastic. Um, Clydesdale South, we do have that trend of four. And Clydesdale West, again, we have that trend of four. Over the year, we've had 11 non-fatal fire casualties. So again, as it's down there in the bottom part, we are working to increase our referral pathway. We are looking to get these individuals 
known to us before they have a fire to do that preventative work to make sure they know about safety within the home, about electrical safety, cooking safety, etc. as well. And if they do need any further safety measures, we can either refer them to the appropriate agency or we can solve it ourselves within our CAT team. Next one, please. The biggest one we have within our area is road traffic collisions and special services. As you can see, the numbers there outside of Clydesdale North are quite high. We do have a reduction, though, from last year, which was obviously the kind of relaxation of the um, COVID restrictions. So we went from 53 down to 48. What we have done to try and improve things around schools is, as a station commander for both p and and for Clydesdale, has invested heavily within VR headsets. Now, VR headsets that we use within the education system, within our antisocial behaviour and our community safety initiatives, actually puts the youths and young people and those who have just taken on their driving around the 16, 17, 18 years age, it puts them in as a passenger within a vehicle which is involved in a road traffic collision. It lets them see all the nonsense that happens within kind of young people in cars. And it then switches once the crash is just about to take place to them getting cut out of vehicle by firefighters and put into an ambulance and then shows them the kind of issues at the back of it as well. With that, we've also re-established the... We've got the Road Safety um, Lead for Scotland within the area now as well, Group Commander Tommy Kay, and we've just re-established our Unintentional Injuries Board as well this year. We've had our first meeting this year too. So we are trying our best to reduce the road traffic collisions within the area, and we're working alongside Police Scotland to the point that any time we are now doing any community safety activities within schools, within local groups, we're contacting Police Scotland to get our local police constables to come along with us to hit that side of education and engagement, but also the consequence side as well, which is helping bring fresh into that. Okay. A special service, fatal and non-fatal casualties. So this is through special services or anything, any type of rescue at all that we go to, not including fires. This also includes within the stats, firefighters having to open doors or make entry for Scottish Ambulance Service to encounter deceased people or people who have taken um, some form of ending their life within that area. We have had non-fire casualties increased by 12 within Q4 of 21-22, but we've had a reduction of 12% on a three-year average within the area. For me, again, it's still too high a number, and we would like to try everything that we can to reduce non-fatal and non-fatal casualties within the special service side of things. The next one's quite topical, as every single meeting that I've been to has gave us questions of some, uh, some sort on UFAS. So unwanted fire alarm signals, as you can see there, we've got 262 for this year. Unwanted fire alarm signals aren't fire alarms that have gone off and then been seen to cause a fire. It's usually faulty equipment, people burning toast, and it's an unnecessary journey. The firefighters, not just one appliance, usually two or three different fire engines from different areas have had to travel blue light speeds towards the area to deal with this. From July the 1st, we're going to stop attending automatic fire alarms. Because when you actually look at the legislation, it's not our responsibility, it's down to the duty holder's responsibility. If there's an automatic fire alarm, if they check it, confirm it's a fire, of course we'll still attend. But if it's just been caused to be a false alarm by a defective um, smoke detector or by burnt toast, then they'll be able to deal with it themselves without having to have a full fire service attendance at that. With that being said, we will still attend sleeping risks. We will still attend hospitals. We will still attend hotels. We will still attend those that are deemed to be extremely high risk through our kind of risk rating profile as well. But again, we are utilising our firefighters with our UFAS leaflets, every single appliance within the Lanarkshire area, and not just Clydesdale has UFAS policy leaflets within them, and also areas of where duty holders can then gain information from. Our fire enforcement officers are also working alongside the kind of highest causes of UFAS and trying to help them reduce it, whether either it's going through and getting a fire alarms checked or providing them with the relevant legislation to help them make a real difference within that area. Okay. As I mentioned before, I'm the station commander for community safety engagement. So Lanark, as you can see, Lanark's a, a single pump station with um, one, uh, uh, sorry, on-call station there. Within South Lanarkshire, we conducted 606 high-risk home fire safety visits within the area with Lanark conducting 71 of them. As you can see, the risk ratings that we have as well, 44% of all the home fire safety visits conducted within Lanarkshire were high. And we wouldn't have this high percentage without the referrals that we're getting in from our partners. As you can see there as well, 337 of the referrals in from home fire safety visits were done by our partners. And this is 337 people who are the most vulnerable in society, the most highest at risk of fire and other issues. 
that we simply would not have known if we hadn't started the work that we started earlier this year with the partnership with Ferrells. And I'll end off on actually quite a, quite a happy side. Within the last year, within 2022 to 2023, Lanarkshire now has its own youth volunteer scheme. It's the first scheme of its kind within the Lanarkshire area, where we have children come into the fire service and effectively join as a miniature firefighter, almost like a cadet scheme type thing. Within Lanarkshire is, is the, the lead for it, I set in place a particular standard that would make ours different from every other one across the country from the rest of the 14. 75% of our children come from a care experience background. I currently sit on the TNT and Who Cares Scotland groups for the area and I represent the services of corporate parent for that. And for me, the fact that these same children that I see within the boards are coming along and have actually joined the fire service family and they'll be with us for a minimum of three years, going through it, gives them education, gets them to work through our own values, safety, teamwork, innovation, respect. We give them employability, we give them opportunities that no other child who is not involved in this would have. The amount of kids as well who've came back and said they're actually able to talk at school We've got kids who have went through a terrible time through their life are now able to stand up in assemblies and provide talks alongside their operational personnel as well. I don't know how many of you remember from being at school, but you never generally tended to have kids stand up alongside firefighters whenever they're delivering their community safety message. That's what we now have. The help out of station open days. We'll get three kids within the area as well who come along to absolutely everything. And the fact that these kids have been embedded within the station that we've got them at, they're even turning up at roll call to help and stand beside roll call. We've got them involved. If you follow our SFRS Lanarkshire Youth Volunteer Scheme Twitter handle, you'll see them actually being inspected at their own roll call by firefighters within the watch. That's how embedded they are. And it's the fact that we now see them absolutely everything. It's a fantastic feeling to see it take place. And within actually the 27th of this month, we'll actually be holding a presentation for year one complete. And the kids will be doing a demonstration of road traffic collision. Um, CPR demonstration, which the kids know and do peer support with as well. They'll be doing breathing up, practice, search and rescue, and also a firefighting demonstration at the back of it too. And from a year ago today, where these kids came in, and we give them a uniform, we give them everything at no cost to them, from these kids going from 10 individuals who didn't know each other, they might have known each other from kind of sitting in detention at school, to kids that work together come along, and we've got two of them who now have a job as well, which is fantastic because their previous home life, none of them have had a job within their kind of generational side. These kids now have jobs. To me, that's a fantastic success. And from next month, we've just um, brought on another nine kids from the areas within Lanarkshire. We've got four individuals as well who are joining as adult instructors, and two of those individuals come from a care experience background, and one of which was arrived in South Lanarkshire as an unaccompanied minor over five years ago. So we have a real sense of community within there. We'll just move on to the next one. And the last part is a home safety referral pathway. We'll just if you want to just bring them up on, it's a few clicks, there we go. So as you can see here, we, the main point about home fire safety visits is to identify and eliminate risks and reduce risks as much as we can within people's homes. We collaborate with other agencies as well. There's a wee picture up there, and the picture up there is of my, one of my Lalos for South Lancashire, Gary Chutel, and one of my advocates, Jana Main, and the Scottish Ambulance Service. With the risk hazard awareness training, Scottish Fire and Rescue Service in Lanarkshire is now embedded into Scottish Ambulance Service trainee training. So whether they're technicians or paramedics, we are now going out to deliver across the country with, with tying in with their university risk hazard awareness training. So every single paramedic now will have that. We're also tied into the social work within South Lanarkshire too, and we've been invited along to their initial training that's held within this building downstairs, and that within either week two or week three, my community advocates or my firefighters are there delivering risk hazard awareness training to ensure that not only our staff, but also all staff within South Lanarkshire, including your social workers, are then being able to do the most for the people within Lanarkshire. So we're going to go again. So it's basic things such as this picture. And whenever we bring up this picture within the risk hazard awareness training, we usually get a few hands going up saying, I've got that in my house. I've got that there. And people just don't know that with these type of sockets and overloading them, can cause arcing within, that's an electricity jumps between the two and can cause a major fire. So we highlight things that people do within their home and it then just gives them that sense of, I'm actually going to go out there and as I said, the amount of referrals that we now get in because it's practical approach as well to fire safety, it's not just all theoretical, it's practical approaches as well, that people are then able to identify risks through a kind of training method. 
We also cover um, oxygen as well, oxygen for older people within their homes. People don't realise it's a risk, but oxygen is a major component within the fire triangle. We cover emollient creams. We did have an issue and still continue to have an issue with emollient creams for certain people if they have the paraffin-based creams and they're a smoker. Paraffin and the lip match don't go too well. We cover electrical safety, and again, in their smoking and cooking. If we can eliminate and reduce all these risks down, we're then reducing our appliances, having to go out and having to drag people out on the worst day of their life. I would rather every single day that my firefighters have real good community engagement, people seem start to see them in a positive light, as opposed to we only see the fire service whenever something bad's happening. And again, we ensure that our partners are equipped with the skills and knowledge to identify a fire risk in the home and to refer for home fire safety visits safely. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Kenny. That, um, your, the work that you do is commendable, and you can see there's improvements there, which is really good. Um, does any of the councillors wish to ask Kenny any questions or make any comments? David, Shira. Thank you, Chair. I take it you can hear me now, yes? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd like to join with you, Chair, in thanking the Scottish Fire Service for everything they do for us, keep us safe right throughout the year. But that was a great presentation, a lot of useful information. A um, couple of questions on the linked smoke detectors that have been installed in people's houses. A, has it made a difference? And how many other properties out there don't have them yet? if you've got that information. Um, the other thing is I happen to be the chair of Care and Repair in, in Lanarkshire, and we, our client base is the elderly, the disabled. Uh, I was wondering whether you've done link-ups with our Care and Repair officers that are out and about, because I do think both organisations could help each other much more than we're doing at the moment, much more linked up. On your brilliant cadet system, that's absolutely fantastic and all power to that. Could you give us an age range of the youngsters that are involved in that? Yep, of Thanks, course. So on, the, on the first question with linked alarms and home fire safety visits, early detection is the best method of getting out. Early detection through link detectors, and again, it is the most high at risk that receives the link detectors. If you own your home, if you're the highest at risk through our risk rating forms and you don't have any detection, then the fire service through our risk rating forms will put up link detection within the homes and the people that are through our high risk profile tend to be the ones that would previously be under our risk assessment and have fires. So yes, it's making a difference. Yes, it's getting people out. And as you can see with the fire casualty stats and the fire death stats, it's clearly working because we've not had any within our area. On the second point, I don't have the full statistics with me and we don't tend to keep those within our own data gathering section there. On the side of the care and repair, we have actually. So myself and my group commander, the head of community safety for all of Lanarkshire, um, all sides of prevention protection, Tom McKay, we've met with um, care and repair within Lanarkshire. And we've actually just done risk hazard awareness training over at Lanark Fire Station through the community room, which is available for all partners and all community groups free of charge. We've done that with my community firefighter, James Scott, taking that training through there. We've also established a referral pathway. Sorry, my mind went there. We've established a referral pathway into yourselves and for yourselves to also refer to us, people who would be the most, you know, the most welcome into a home fire safety visit. So we do have those up um, together. In terms of age ranges, so again, this is where Lanarkshire is different. Because it's a kind of, it's just the way I am. I think we should do the most for the most and help those most that need. Our age range for youth volunteer scheme is from the ages of 12 to 18. So we have that different generation, although it might not seem a lot, the difference in generation, the difference in people between the ages of 12 to 18 is incredible. And then we're also taking on our instructors. So it's people who aren't even involved in the fire service. This is members of the public who would like to do volunteering can join from age 18 and upwards. And we've already been told of two of our members who are leaving this year because we've reached that 18-year age range that they are coming back as volunteers. We have put that part within their mind frame to actually come and become volunteers and help out the local community. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, brilliant work and long may it continue. Thanks. Thanks, David, and thanks, Kenny, for your answers. Uh, I've got Eileen, uh, Councillor Eileen Logan, thanks. Um, thanks very much. And echo what David said. It was an excellent uh, presentation and very informative for everyone. I have two sort of mm -hmm. more functional questions. Um, when you were giving your statistics about road accidents and various things that you were talking about, um, I sit in say for South Lanarkshire and another committee, so I get a lot of you know, information passed through. And one of the things a good number of years ago I asked, please don't or set to the side the motorway. We've got the largest stretch of motorway, as you know, in Scotland here. Mm -hmm. So our figures always looked horrendous. But if you took, took them and split them and said, well, the motorway was that and the locals was that, um, how do you work that in, into your statistics? Basically, are you just absolutely local, Claysdale, or do you have to look at the motorway statistics? That's my first question. I'll just give you the two and then you can answer them. And my second question is, um, when you were talking about uh, your officers and you, you maybe have to break in a door, do whatever, uh, but also, again, through the different committees that I sit on, for a while, um, the ambulance service was under great strain um, and through COVID and, and various things and really quite a lot of you know, strain. So it was told at that time that um, without the backup of other services, say, for instance, I have a, a very sheltered housing complex, quite near where I live, actually, maybe people falling and, and whatever. So to let the... Ambulances be diverted maybe to wherever. It was normally, I think, the your service, you know, was, was actually taking up the slack kind of thing. So has that eased off a wee bit? That's my two questions. Thank you. So in my statistics for the motorway, again, we can all report on what the Scottish Government direct is to report on. And through that, we wouldn't break it down. It's just because it covers the area. Um, we could potentially go in through fire reports to determine where it was, but for meetings like this, to gather all that information together, because it is within the Clydesdale area, and if it is an issue within the Clydesdale area, then it's something that we want to get involved in to help out. We wouldn't like to separate a stretch of motorway going through the M74, which I cover myself on fire cover, um, and just break it up that way. It would then become slightly messy of who, of who does what. On the second part, that's where... Um, we term that so that they can have medical emergencies as part of our special service routine. And as a watch commander myself, we used to go out and do it. If people fall over, we'll help them up. But again, we don't have that training, so it does then relate back to the Scottish Ambulance Service. So we will always attend. If someone phones us that they've had a fall or they're injured, we will attend, we'll put the door in, and we'll help that person as and when. What we will do, though, is work in partnership with our Scottish Ambulance Service colleagues to either get a paramedic out to give them a, a precautionary checkup, a referral, or take them to hospital. It hasn't eased off as much as it as it has just because of the way things are just now, but um, the fire service will always respond whenever we are called. Sorry, Chair. Sorry, I, 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 knew, I know that because I just know it. But I wondered, at one point, be a different route. Um, I know it, there was a concern because it was, you know, it was, it was quite heavy duty for yourselves. And all I wondered was if things had sort of eased a bit or if it was still quite a high volume. It's still a high volume um, of our calls, our special services. It is still a high volume. Thanks, Kerry. Uh, thanks for your question, Eileen. Uh, uh, Councillor Ralph Barker, thanks. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you for the report. Um, professional as always. Um, I think three hardly questions. I don't expect you to know details. If you do, that's okay. Um, where residents are concerned about bad parking, uh, restricting or preventing um, emergency vehicles, I think you've got a kind of a procedure, if you just mention that. Um, Lead Hills Fire Station, which seems to be not closed but not open, um, but was included in a recent recruitment ad. If you if you know anything about that, it'd be good to good to hear it. 
And finally, you know, thanks for the quick reaction yesterday uh, when we had a lorry fire adjacent to the petrol station at Abington Services. It was spot on. Thanks. Um, the first thing, the, the kind of first question on parking. So we do have leaflets within our appliances that do relate to people parking and obviously obstructing fire service vehicles. Unfortunately, we do not have any statutory powers to move vehicles out of the way. And we wouldn't want to shove vehicles out of the way either because that would then damage our fire appliances and stop them being able to respond to emergencies. So we would always advise people to contact Police Scotland on 101 if they do have concerns or raise them at a community board to obviously then um, be able to put that across to the local police um, sergeant or within their area. On section two with lead hills, it's not my area. I don't really know any details about it. It's not um, my station that I, have, that I tend to look after um, in section three. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ralph, and thanks for your answers. Kenny, could you perhaps get the answer for lead hills to Ralph? Um, a response. Thanks. Uh, I have Councillor Julia Mars. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask a question that is in part relating to the wider South Lanarkshire stats for RTCs, which I'm aware of um, as a member of another board, say for South Lanarkshire. So I'm unsure if I'm asking you a question that you'll you'll uh, that I could have asked you next week if you'll also be attending that board. But the um, say for South Lanarkshire papers um, give a very similar report, but for um, the whole of, of South Lanarkshire and and break down the age and gender stats a wee bit more for um, RTCs. And it's it's interesting that, that while I absolutely applaud the work um, that you're doing um, with VR headsets and, and working in schools to, to reduce young people's um, accidents, but the 50 to 79 age group is actually higher for Clydesdale, according to those Safer South, South Lancashire papers. Um, and I'm wondering if the VR headsets go out to to people more in the, the older um, generation, their groups and, and people places where they may be, because I think they're of benefit to any age group to try and reduce the, the RTCs. I'm also interested that, again, and I'm sorry if I'm asking you, question about about a set of papers that you you haven't seen or have knowledge of but Cambus Lang Rutherglen are the lowest for RTCs in the Safer South Lancashire board papers and Clydesdale the highest I wonder if that is indicative of the country roads and the, and perhaps a complacency and greater speeds that, that Clydesdale suffers. On your first part in relation to the VR headsets yes we use them everywhere we take them out. My community advocates, all eight of them have been trained in the use of VR headsets and the associated documents. The VR headsets don't just cover road traffic collisions. They also cover house fires. And they have a multitude of areas. We actually brought them along to the Lanarkshire Global Citizenship event as well to showcase what we were doing within the area. My community advocates don't just link in with schools and they actually do link in with every other group within the area that they are invited along to. If you know of any groups that have older drivers, I mean, we have already been up to East Kilbride to the DHL depot and cover road safety with their new drivers as well. If it's something or you know of any older groups with older drivers that would like to invite us along, we will attend. We will happily get involved. My advocates will happily talk to you. And if it would be something along the lines of road traffic collisions or the VR headsets, if you let us know, we will attend. We would be delighted to attend. Um, on the second section of... In terms of the, the kind of road traffic area and the, the difference of um, roads, I wouldn't be able to give a professional opinion on that because, it, again, it's, it wouldn't be my remit. It would be more down to Police Scotland with that state of things. And it would simply be conjecture. I couldn't put an opinion across from the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. Are you happy with that, Julia? I don't see you. I presume... Yeah, I, I clicked to stop speaking um, automatically, um, but yes, thank you. I know I understand that there's a cross remit with Police Scotland. Just think it's um, interesting that the most urban areas of Southland have apparently much fewer RTCs than 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 uh, than we do in Clydesdale, and um, with a smaller population, then then to me it would uh, suggest a difference in the way that roads are driven. Thanks, Julia, for your question, and thanks, Kenny, for your answers. I've got Councillor Ross Gowland. Yep. 
Uh, thanks for that report and all the, the good work that you do. Um, I have Douglas and Esme Eagle stations in, in my own ward. Um, anything I can do in terms of supporting the youth volunteer scheme, which are in the community, um, it, sound, it sounds brilliant, the scheme itself. I've heard a little bit about it, but I think it's a, it's a really good scheme, scheme by the looks of it. Um, can I ask just one other question? Is, do you know, do you work with, much with social work in terms of partnership working, that's social work in the South Financial Council, when it comes to vulnerable um, people in the community in terms of Yep, so we work alongside social work on a daily basis. We're also tied into all of the adult protection committees and things as well. On a weekly basis, um, Malilo for South Lancashire, Gary, um, he actually sits within the hub meetings, which is a kind of cross-partnership event to see what's happening within the areas, who's most at risk or any kind of flare-ups or trends within the area identified to then deal with them um, to try and reduce, obviously, the flare-ups. With social work, we have really good links in. We've got really good links in with Julie Stewart, who obviously sits within the Adult Protection Committee as well. And with uh, South Lanarkshire, um, when they had the new the kind of new people within here, we've actually tied into their L and D from a P and P perspective within Lanarkshire to actually provide training with our social workers. We do have really good referral pathways in South Lanarkshire as well for people at risk, and that's where I was saying. You know, we had single with single digit numbers of referrals coming into us, and we've now tripled. Both tripled that to within the hundreds and it is the links that we do have with um, our social work colleagues that are giving us the most at risk people. Thanks for your question Ross and thanks for your answer Kenny. I don't see anybody else ask, want to ask you questions or congratulate you on the work that you actually do and your, and your uh, report was excellent as well and um, so if you would like to leave uh, with your sidekick there Lawrence Murphy who was uh, <laughs> taking the notes as we were going along and uh, that's fine we can just continue and meeting thanks very much thank you we'll probably see you next year maybe we better stats <laughs> Well done. So uh, going to number four, what's the Education Scotland report for Cooter Primary School, pages 9 to 14. We've got Jacqueline Wallace and Jill Kennedy, the head teacher, um, is joining us remotely. Um, uh, she'll speak to this report. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, Chair and Councillors. Um, as we said, my name is Jacqueline Wallace, Quality Improvement Manager and Quality Improvement Link for Clydesdale and for Cooter Primary School. So pleased to be here today with, hopefully, with the head teacher, Mrs Jill Kennedy, joining us remotely to advise members on the outcome of the school's um, HMI inspection. Um, Jill is actually currently at the Scottish Education Awards with pupils from the school, um, so I'm presuming connection may be difficult if she's not able to join us, but um, hopefully she will be shortly. Um, but Education at Scotland undertook a full and model inspection of the quality of educational provision within Cooter Primary School week beginning 7th of November 2022, with the report published on the 20th of December 2022. The full model for inspection focuses on four quality indicators from how good is our school. These are quality indicators 1.3, leadership of change, 2.3, learning, teaching and assessment, 3.1, improving wellbeing, equality and inclusion, and quality indicator 3.2, raising attainment and achievement. And Kilta Primary School were evaluated as being very good for all four quality indicators. And these grades were also reflective of the school's own self-evaluation at the time. So this was a very well-deserved and very positive result for the school. And an evaluation of very good indicates that major strengths have been ident identified in the school's work and there are very few areas for improvement. It also represents a high standard of provision for all children and young people within the establishment. Cooter Primary School on this occasion have also had an area of practice highlighted as worth sharing nationally as part of the inspection process. And this can be read in more detail in the summary of inspection findings. And the head teacher will hopefully talk to you a little more about this shortly. <laughs> Um, as you may know, Cooter Primary School is located in a rural area of South Lanarkshire Council within the village of Cooter and Clydesdale. And at the time of inspection, the school had 15 children organised across its two classes. Most children live in areas designated as Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation, decils 5 to 8. However, given the rurality of the school, this is not necessarily reflective of its demographic and its context. The head teacher has been post for 16 years and undertakes a shared headship role across both Cooter and Lamington primary schools. The two areas for development noted by the Education Scotland team had already been identified by the head teacher and the school as part of their own self-evaluation. And the school are already working on the identified areas for continued development and these are central to the school's improvement plan. 
The head teacher has clear plans in place to support high quality learning and teaching and to continue to raise attainment for all learners. And the school quality link officer will continue to work with the school to support their plans for improvement. And Education Scotland have intimated that they are confident that the school will be able to take forward the areas for improvement and will make no further visits in connection with their support. So if possible, we will pass to the head teacher. But I think, is that possibly a no? Unfortunate. Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, she's not present. OK. Is it OK if I read out that I've got a statement from her that she was going yes, to read? Yes, that be all right? Go ahead. OK, thank you very much, Chair. Um, so this is on behalf of, of Jill Kennedy, head teacher. So everyone at Cooter Primary School is committed to the benefits that rural education and small schools provide to learners. We were therefore delighted that the inspection of Cooter Primary School highlighted that all staff have a strong focus on improving outcomes for all learners and high quality learning and teaching experiences are provided. We were equally delighted that practice in our wee school will be shared nationally and I firmly believe that our practice can benefit learners no matter if the establishment has 15, 150 or 500 learners. It is essential for wellbeing and progress that children have a wide range of opportunities and experiences. And partnership working is essential at Kuta Primary School and it pr we pride ourselves on having a wide range of partners to support the children. Partners support children to participate in sporting, cultural and social events and the partners support us to create a sense of belonging in our community. Past pupils are experiencing success in regional and international rugby as an example. And partnership working with senior citizens is a real strength of our community. Last session, the school worked on a podcast project, um, including soup days, afternoon teas and sewing afternoons are leading to valuable intergenerational conversations and breaking down social isolation, especially post-COVID. Excuse me. Strong partnership with parents, church, local sports clubs and staff from partner schools being lamenting are leading to children developing important transferable skills and all skills developed are linked closely to their progression pathways for their curriculum. The development of skills for learning, life and work makes the pupils of Cooter Primary School have better life chances and they're able to make connections across their learning. We are proud of our cost of the school day work and really ask parents to contribute to the school expenses. We apply for grants, have closed swap, swap shops and have a weekly information bulletin on how families can access support with the cost of living crisis. And we are removing and working hard to remove the stigma associated with asking for support to ensure no child misses out. So that was a statement from Jill Kennedy, head teacher. So I would like to thank Jill for submitting that on that behalf. And the committee is therefore asked to approve the following recommendation to note the Education Scotland report of Recruiter Primary School. And thank you, we'd welcome any comments or questions if I can help with anything following that. Thank you, Jacqueline. And thank, uh, could you thank Jill on behalf of the committee for her written report that you read out for us? It's unfortunate because she couldn't make it today, but it's an excellent report. There's not many people will get, and, and the quality indicator is very good, I don't suppose, to get four is absolutely excellent. i um, really pleased to see that, and I'm sure Tony McDade, who's leaving us, uh, will be uh, happy as well. And if Lindsay Hamilton had been here, she's the Chair of Education, she would have uh, congratulated the school as well on the report. Uh, do we have any questions or comments from the councillors? Councillor Eileen Logan. Thank you, Chair, and thanks very much for the information. And I know you'll take back to this, the school um, and and the head, well, to the head, all the, the, the pupils, everybody. Um, our thanks. Um, the one thing I did want to say is when shared headships were mooted a long time ago now, but I was still sitting probably in this same seat at the time. Um, there was a big hullabaloo and it was very difficult and people were going to start sending petitions and they were doing this and that and, and they thought that their schools was sort of be, being demoted a wee bit. But that has just proved that um, it's been a very, very good thing. It has worked very, very well. Uh, and just through, because I know some people in the area, I know that even the two schools mingle and, and integrate uh, and come into the community. So sometimes we back away from what we think is going to be a problem to us. But if you just persevere, there you are. It, it worked out and has worked out uh, very, very well. Um, and as our chairs did say, I mean, there'd be very few reports that could come in like that. And the other thing I noted uh, from the submission is that 
it doesn't matter whether there's five or 500. It's only, it's a balance, isn't it, of scale. So if you're catering for five or 500, then you've got to teach. It's just, it's just a balance of scale. But I'm, I'm so pleased, but I'm also very pleased uh, that it's proved to be a good thing to have integrated head teachers. Thank you. Thanks, Eileen. There's no question that was just all nice comments. Very good. No, no, that's what you're allowed to do that, Eileen. We know that. <laughs> uh, no, no, I couldn't. Uh, now we've got Councillor Alec Allison. Thanks. Um, I think it's just important as uh, one of the ward councillors to congratulate the school on the uh, on 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 these results, we also need to highlight that it's not any flash in the pan because the previous inspections that that particular head teacher had, I think, uh, included excellence, and it's great to see that the success she's having in uh, in her role as a head teacher there is continuing over a long period and deserves every piece of thanks and congratulations she gets for doing over such an extended period. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Alec. Um, I'm sure um, Jacqueline will send best wishes to the head teacher and tell us, well, she can watch this on YouTube, in fact. <laughs> uh, now we'll have uh, Councillor Ralph Barker. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you for that report. Um, yes, a really good report. So congratulations um, to all concerned and particularly for uh, a long-term Head teacher who certainly isn't starting to take it easy after so many years. Thank you. Thanks, Ralph. Okay, so I don't think there's anybody else wanting to speak. So um, just pass back our good wishes or tell it to watch YouTube. <laughs> um, so we're going on to uh, number five Education Scotland report for St Athanasius Primary School and Nursery Class Curriculum. Pages 15 to 22. And again, it'll be Jacqueline Wallace and Brenda O'Hara, who's the head teacher, will speak to this report. Thanks. Um, it's another success story. So delighted to share this one also. Um, so again, this one, as you said, is for St Athanasius Primary School and Nursery Class. Um, and delighted that Brenda is with us today um, to take any questions or comments from yourself as we move on. So for St Athanasius, the school was inspected during the week beginning 6th of March 2023. And Education Scotland undertook a full model inspection in the school also on the quality of educational provision. Um, and this inspection report was published on the 25th of April 2023. And this one, it was a case of the primary school and the nursery class as well. Um, again, it was a full inspection model focusing on the four quality indicators that we have talked about um, previously for how good is our school and also for how good is our early learning and childcare in respect of the early years in nursery. And the school and nursery received gradings for each of these indicators, as well as a more detailed written report of findings which highlights particular strengths and areas for continued improvement. And again, the outcome for St Athanasius was extremely positive. Quality indicator 1.3, leadership of change in the school and the nursery, was evaluated as very good, which means major strengths and very few areas for improvement. For leadership of change to be cited as very good provides the local authority and pupils and families a high degree of confidence about the capacity of the school to continue improving. Quality indicator 2.3, learning, teaching, assessment for the school and the nursery, uh, for the school, sorry, was evaluated as very good and for the nursery as good. Quality indicator 3.2, raising attainment and achievement in the school was evaluated as good and securing children's progress, the equivalent in the nursery, was evaluated as very good. And quality indicator 3.1, ensuring well-being, equality, inclusion school and in the school and nursery were both evaluated as very good. So uh, again, an extremely positive picture for the school. And in terms of the demographics, St Athanasius is situated in the Carluk area of South Lanarkshire. Currently 19% of pupils live in SIMD 1 and 2 and 37% of pupils are entitled to free school meals. This session, the school has received £40,425,000 in pupil equity funding to help narrow the poverty-related attainment gap. And Brenda O'Hara, the current head teacher, took up post in August 2021. So I'm going to hand over to Brenda, who is going to talk about some of the particular highlights from the report and consider the areas for continued improvement. Thank you, Jacqueline, and good afternoon, Chair and Councillors. So as Jacqueline said, my name is Brenda O'Hara. I am now, since 2021, as Jacqueline said, the head teacher of St Athanasius. So 
while I'm relatively new in post, um, I have been in the school since 2012 and in a promoted post um, as PT and Deputy since 2016 with the nursery and ASN as my remit. Um, until I returned from acting head teacher post to become the head teacher of St Athanasius. We are a new leader, new ish leadership team with one deputy and two part time principal teachers. And together we have a wealth of experience, are committed to achieving success for our school and for our children. Our last inspection was about 15 years ago, so we had been waiting for them coming for quite some time, both before and after the pandemic. So it was a great relief with a little bit of nervous anticipation when the phone call finally came. The team were delighted to meet our children in the school and nursery, highlighting how well behaved and very welcoming towards visitors they were. It was clear to them that our children are proud of their school and motivated to learn and engage very well with learning experiences. We are proud of our nurturing ethos in St Athanasius Primary, which the inspection team felt very strongly, with relationships coming across from the moment they walked in the door being highlighted as a real strength. The report also highlighted the highly effective blend of leadership across the school and the nursery. All teaching and nursery staff were found to have a strong commitment to professional development, taking on lead responsibilities with enthusiasm, embracing the opportunity to develop the leadership skills. For example, the report found that despite the rollout of the 11.40 hours of early learning and childcare, bringing about quite a bit of change, including the building itself and the organisation of our playroom, our nursery staff remained a strong team who worked incredibly well together with the leadership team to try new approaches and to adapt and review any of the changes that were required. It was clear to the team that um, we always could consider what is best for our children. For example, lunch times have been significantly improved, resulting in a calm and engaging experience for children and staff. The report also notes that our staff, both in nursery and school, know our community very well, which has meant they were able to effectively support children and families. This is including providing effective emotional and mental wellbeing support, particularly um, during and after the COVID pandemic, accessing help from both health and education colleagues and removing any financial barriers to learning, for example, paying for residential trips, providing uniforms and Christmas gifts for some of our children. By using the Pupil Equity Fund, the report also found that we effectively support targeted children to close the poverty-related attainment gap, and we are now na beginning to narrow these gaps as a result of teachers' well-planned interventions. The inspection notes the strength of communication in both school and nursery, effectively working together in partnership with parents and partner agencies to improve outcomes for our children. In the report, the inspection team recognised the positive impact of involving our children, families and staff to develop the school's vision, values and aims, which are underpinned by our gospel values. It was evident to the team that the school values have helped to form both a shared language and direction for improvement across the school. Staff discuss them purposely with their children and our, the PTs, the deputy and myself use these values to celebrate children's successes through weekly assemblies. It was found that our children are so invested in these values that we hold dear and we are very proud that HMI recognised recognize this and reported that our children talk confidently about these values of kindness, respect, trust, inclusive resilience and aspiration and what they mean to, to all of us in our school and our personal lives. In learning and teaching, a few of the key highlights include in the early level it was highlighted there is a well thought through balance between free play and adult directed play. Across the school and nursery, children make effective use of technology to support the learning, for example, to undertake research, develop creativity and peer learning and presentation skills. It was also noted that our staff make very effective use of digital technology to help children who require additional support. Our children routinely take their learning outdoors. For example, children in primary three and four work in partnership with a local community group, One Can, to develop the community garden and orchard. As planned, we intend to develop a progressive programme for outdoor learning to enhance children's knowledge of the local area and learning for sustainability. In nursery, it was found that the outdoor environment offers a good selection of risky play activities and experiences, including loose parts and climbing opportunities. The play environment within the nursery was found to offer attractive resources and real experiences for children, and the inspectors reported that our children are calm, engaged in their play, and are supported by well-thought-through routines. Learning in the nursery was complemented with good progress being made in children's early writing and communication skills, practice um, worthy of sharing more widely. In nursery, our children are found to be excited to share their learning experience with each other, and as a result of the supportive environment and caring interactions from practitioners, children's behaviour remains positive throughout the day. Overall, in the school, our attainment in reading, writing, listening and talking and numeracy was found to be good, with children being able to confidently speak about their learning in these areas, for example, a new flexible approach to teaching numeracy and mathematics was highlighted as practice worth sharing more widely. This gives the children the opportunity to really challenge themselves and take responsibility for their learning in this area. 
The report also recognised the work being done in the school and nursery by staff to help our children recognise and celebrate diversity, including challenging stereotypes, celebrating key cultural events, supporting others in the community and celebrating people who challenge inequality. It was noted that our children are improving their understanding of equality and diversity through these experiences within health and wellbeing and religious and moral education. They found that our children are proud of the increasing range of, re of countries represented in our school and that they encourage everyone to be kind and inclusive. We intend to continue to make relevant links to diversity and equality throughout the curriculum. And finally, the report finds that our shared vision in the school, which is inspired by Pope Fran a quote from Pope Francis, to dream of great things, ensures staff's aspirations for our children are high. This focus is resulting in a continually improving, nurturing and inclusive environment, both in school and nursery, where children and staff are supported very effectively. Overall, it is clear that the inspection found that the school and nursery are performing very well in a culture where everyone feels confident to share their ideas and contribute to school improvement. And this reflects on the hard work and care that is ongoing daily. Thank you. Thanks very much, Brenda, and thanks, Jacqueline, for your presentation. And I must admit, here's another very good report in Clydesdale area. Clydesdale always does it well. Um, and again, Tony must be so pleased when he's going to he see the, these reports coming in. And I know that Lindsay Hamilton, who's, uh, as I previously said, the chair, but she's also of this area, um, would be delighted to have said something, but obviously can't today. Um, now, I've got Councillor Eileen Logan. Oh, sorry. No, no. Okay, thanks very much, Chair. Um, I actually live in Kirluk, as you know, and this school lies in the heart of what is Ward 1, basically. Um, and I am very proud of all the schools in, in Kirluk. I think we're one of the extremely lucky towns to have such good uh, schools and such good education standards for all the children. But today, of course, it's St Athanasius that we're, we're, we're celebrating and praising. Um, and I was just thinking about this the other day. St Athanasius will now be the longest established school within the town because because of boundaries and changes and different things. What used to be uh, the wee school of Kirluk was, was changed and moved, but St Athanasius has been a constant uh, probably for over 100 years, you know, within the town. And it has always put out great pupils, myself being one. <laughs> Uh, and my mum before that, and away you go. And uh, but it, it is an excellent school, and I know that Lindsay, myself, and David Shearer, if he's um, still in line, uh, in particular, loved coming to the school uh, to the shows and just to all the different things that was going on in the school. And I think it's it's um, fantastic for Mrs. Ahara that she was in post for such a short time, and then a heavy inspection came. Uh, but with her, at the the uh, Brenda, the 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 Helen, the, the ship just sailed straight on, and uh, we received this wonderful report. I'll not embarrass you anymore, but one of my granddaughters, in particular, wouldn't let you say anything bad about Mrs. O'Hara. She's in a pedestal somewhere about ten feet high. But um, another one didn't like the school, so. <laughs> no matter. But it is a good school, as all the schools are in our town, so we're very, very lucky. But today it's for you, it's for your school. Uh, and as Catherine said, Lindsay can't be here and probably David will speak uh, maybe behind me. But I know that um, for Lindsay and I, uh, thanks very much for everything you do and uh, take back your congratulations and best wishes. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Logan. Um, and we won't tell your granddaughters to look YouTube because you'll just embarrass them. So um, now we've got Councillor David Shearer as we thought we would have. Thanks, David. That's a difficult act to follow uh, from Eileen. But I had the pleasure to open the new building that they're in on behalf of uh, Councillor Gray. I stood in for Ian Gray, who had a heart attack, but it was my pleasure to open the current St Athanasius building. And as Eileen has said, the primary school is an absolute credit to not only Kirluk and to the local members, but to the local community and to the education authority. Rightly so, as you said, Chair, Tony McDade must be very proud of these reports that are showing 
excellent returns uh, on the the schools that he's been in charge of for many a year. But uh, on a local level and joining with Eileen and Lindsay, just to praise the great work that's been done at St Athanasius, long may it continue, and I'm sure it will. But a fantastic report. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, David. Um, and if you could just pass back our regards to all your teachers and helpers and whatever their capacity, cooks, cleaners, etc. Because um, obviously it's a, it's a team effort. So we very much appreciate it. And thanks for your report. Again, if you want to leave, that's fine. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so number six on the agenda is the Education Resources Participatory Budget, PB if you want. Um, pupil equity funding pages 23 to 26 and it's Laura Mitchell and Barbara Lee the head teacher from Les Mahigo High School who will speak to this report, thanks Thank you Chair Good afternoon councillors, I'm delighted to be here to present education resources report around participatory budgeting to give you an update on the progress with participatory budgeting within the Clydesdale area um, Today we're asking you to know the, the progress within this report Following consultation and the voting process as reported at the last area committee, schools have progressed with their spend to ensure the minimum 5% was spent in full by the end of March 2023. I'm pleased to share um, Les Mahigo High School's participatory budgeting work as an example of good practice within the Clydesdale area and the head teacher Barbara Lee has joined with me today and um, there will be an opportunity to ask any questions um, to her once um, we finish the report. Um, this case study of Les Mahigo illustrates the school's participatory budgeting journey this session. This session, 108 parents voted as part of the process, which is double the amount of parent votes from last session at Les Mahigo. These voting figures are encouraging in the secondary sector as it is often more difficult to engage families in PB in within our high schools. The school also have plans in place to improve pupil voting in um, next session. This demonstrates the value and commitment Les Mahigo High School have with regards to PB and pupil voice. The voice from stakeholders was very much about improving experiences for all pupils, but particularly for our pupils affected by poverty. Developing new learning spaces which pupils can access throughout the school day to support learning and engagement in school was a key area for spend, along with the purchase of lockers to mitigate stigma and issues around cost of the school day. A further impact section will be added to this case study before the end of term to show the, the benefit that this activity has had for our most vulnerable learners. In terms of participatory budgeting across the rest of our Clydesdale schools and South Lanarkshire, PB is now fully embedded in SLC schools' work through the pupil equity funding. Schools are continuing to allocate a minimum of 5% of their pupil equity funding um, money to be subject to participatory budgeting year on year. Schools received an updated guidance on this at the Head Teachers and Equity Leads Information Session on the 19th of May, and we're providing optional participatory budgeting training um, in August for schools who have new PB leads or who would like a refresh in this area. Um, we're really proud of the work that's going on in our schools. Our South Lanarkshire schools PB work continues to be recognised nationally as an example of good practice. Several local authorities have approached us for guidance and support in this area as South Lanarkshire Council are the only local authority in Scotland who have dedicated as much as 5% of their pupil equity funding from all schools towards PB. It has also been agreed by the Chief Executive that a COSLA award application be submitted in May to showcase the work of our schools in this area. As I said, we're incredibly proud of it. I now open up to any questions, um, either from myself or from Barbara, around Les Mahigo's case study. Thanks. Sorry, has Barbara got to say anything? No, 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 that, that's fine. Thank, right, thanks for your report. Um, do we have anybody? Just, just oh, sorry. Me to give any further information. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer your questions. Or if you'd like me to talk through any part of the report, I'm happy to do that. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so we've got Councillor Ross Gowland. Yeah, just as a local one of the local members for Clydesdale South and Les Mahego, I'd like to commend Les Mahego High on the, on the action that they've taken and taking 
action they're taking on on poverty in Les Mahago and with regards to the cost of the school day. I mean, I got a lot of the parent councils across the ward and it is a lot of the parent councils have a, a real battle to try and take the cost of the school day bring it, to bring it down. Um, it's also great to see the participatory budgeting work in SLC is recognised nationally. Um, I suppose, Barbara, can I ask in terms of how you how you manage to deal with uh, participatory participatory budgeting? <laughs> it's a mouthful. But, um, just in terms of the process, did you did you find it quite a, an easy process in terms of? The children were very keen to be part of the process and uh, the discussions initially started within uh, our pupil council meetings and then from that we set up a group that were particularly interested. We gathered their information, we also gathered information from teachers and from the parent council and from the, the wider uh, parent body. We then collated that information uh, under four headings uh, and then put that out to the vote to, uh, to determine which area the children would like us to take forward and uh, staff and parents. So uh, we had summarised their, their ideas under education, uh, which included things like external speakers, textbooks, new library books, new art supplies, or access to education, which was more linked to ICT, stationery, school bags, career fairs, sensory items for the nurture room, health and wellbeing, um, linked to mental health training for pupils, sports competitions, bike racks, lockers uh, and schools, breakfast clubs, sports clubs, uh, water fountains and school experience, looking at winter uniform, inspirational posters, outdoor social spaces, larger lockers, uh, improving access to lockers, plants and art around the building. So that was the, the kind of four themes that they came up with. From that, the vote uh, then was conducted in tutor time for the pupils and through a Google uh, a Google forum for the staff and for the parents. And it was the school experience area that had uh, had been selected. So that was how we went about that. And then we've tried to take forward as many of the other areas the children had identified as well through other budgets or grant applications. Thanks very much for your question, Ross and Barbara, for your answer. Um, now we have Mark Horsham, Councillor Mark Horsham, sorry. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, thank you very much for um, that chair to let me in. And Miss Lees, first let me thank you very much for a, a great um, prize given last night. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And you could see the engagement there between the parents and the pupils and, and, and the school. Um, the, the one thing that probably I'm going to add here is obviously you learn on the previous year's experience to get to increase the engagement. How do you continue that going forward? How do you, how do you see to you continue that and keep the numbers going up with the engagement with the, 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 the parents? We'll aim to give a, a wider uh, period of time for voting to take place. So we had given three days. Uh, two years ago, we had given a week last year, so we'll probably give a wider period of time yet again uh, to, to make it more possible for, for parents to have the opportunity to vote straight away or to be reminded as a follow-up message to do that. So really just trying to increase the time for voting uh, and also uh, in tutor time, we'll try to give further follow-ups as well just so that there's more opportunity for every young person to have their say in such an important process. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Mark, and for your answer, Barbara. Um, so I think there are no more questions. Um, just wish South Lancashire luck with the COSLA Award. <laughs> Be nice to have that. Um, and if you wish to go, that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we'll go on to uh, item seven, a uh, place scheme grant applications 23, 24, pages 27 to 28. Uh, do you want to add anything to it, Carol? Thank you, Chair. So, yeah, this um, really is just the annual Play Scheme Grant application report that comes to committee, which most members are probably familiar with by now. So, this time around, we only have one application, which is Lanark Universal Connections. Um, the amount award recommended is £550, um, and that is for the reason that they have applied for summer and October um, periods only. Um, um, as members will also be aware, so the 
money for the play scheme grants is linked to the community grants um, and the money comes out of the same budget. I don't see any questions. So, oh, sorry, I, uh, Councillor Logan. Right, Phil Magdalene, if you like. Uh, just a, a quick question. I, I thought that, so I am assuming if somebody else had to get around to asking for that grant, can they still come in? I know it can be, or, or, or are we between, because we're between committees, what would happen? I think um, they, they can apply for the, the grant money retrospectively. Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe, maybe no, sorry, I didn't even maybe phrase that right. Say they were slow in getting off the mark and then they think, right, for the month of July or whatever they're going to do, they'll have that play scheme. Uh, could they come in whether it was retrospect or, or would it be re a retrospective payment because their next committee is not a such and such a time? Our next committee will be September. Um, as I say, I'm not, I'm not overly familiar with the play scheme grants. Um, the person that does it isn't actually um, at work at the moment. Um, but I can, yeah, I can, I can take that back. I, I just find it strange as only one because that. that's never been before. Just one. I think we only had the one last Did year you? as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought it was more than that. Right. Well, that's fine then. But I just wondered if somebody had got their act together. But I will. I'll, I'll find that uh, information out yeah, and I'll, I'll drop you email. For me, and I don't know about anybody else, but I would be quite happy to delegate to Catherine and uh, or our chair and deputy chair. If there was a one come in off the out the blue kind of thing. I think we'll find out if we can Aye. do that legally and no, I'll, I'll leave it with you. But I mean personally I would be quite happy if that if that was the case. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay then, Eileen. So I I'll approve the report. Is that seconded? Uh, seconded. Okay. Um, so we'll go on to eight, the community grant applications, pages 29 to 34. Uh, Carol will sort this out. We've got two um, declarations of interest. So over to you, Carol. <laughs> How do you want to do it? Thank you, Chair. So I think if we perhaps deal with the two applications that um, have declarations of interest in. So if we firstly deal with application B, which is Kirkfield Bank Home and Sporting Club, and if Councillor Mars could leave the meeting, and we will reinvite you once the application has been dealt with. Okay, I can confirm. King Councillor Mars has has now left the meeting. So yeah, this this is an application by Kirkfield Bank Home and Sporting Club for equipment, administration, and publicity costs. Um, they have applied for £290 um, and given that that is kind of under the limit for sporting organisations, the recommendation was £290. I don't see any, any questions. I move to grant that. That's uh, seconded. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you, okay. Chair. We'll, we'll just invite Councillor Mars back into the meeting. She's not back with us as yet. Yeah, we don't. Oh, right, so we've got Julia back. Um, so we'll move on to G, um, West Mahigo Highland Games Society, and Ross Gowan is going to leave them in for this. Thanks. Okay, 
Okay, thank you, Chair. So, um, application G is by Las Mahego Highland Games Society, um, and they have applied for equipment. They um, applied for £1,000, and the recommended grant is £600, Chair. Don't see MD asking any questions, so I will move to grant that request. You should be. Sorry, That's okay. I'm oh, sorry, Ralph. You saying that? Right, I'll second that. Sorry, I see uh, David Shearer's got his hand up. David. Sorry, Chair. I am having some technical difficulties. Um, your picture is frozen. And I don't know if you can hear me. And I'm not sure I'm hearing everything that's going on in the room. We hear you. We're not frozen. We're nice and cosy in here. <laughs> <laughs> can you see me? We can see you. We can hear you. Yeah. So you can hear us. So yes. we'll just go ahead. Are you okay with that? It's now a meeting by radio. Yeah. Right. Thank you. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> right. So we'll go through each one uh, if you want, Carol. Kind of thanks. Thank you, Chair. So application A is Carmichael Babies and Toddlers, and they have applied for entrance fees. Um, they have applied for £575. And the recommendation is three hundred and fifty pounds. I don't see anybody with their hand up. So is that agreed? Is that agreed? Okay, thank you. Okay, application B, we've already dealt with. So application C is Elgical WRI for announcing. Um, they applied for £300 and the recommendation is £300, Chair. Again, I see no hands. It's The recommendation is the amount that we normally would give, so I would uh, recommend the £300. Okay, agreed. Thank you, Chair. So um, application D is Low Parish Church Guild and again for an outing. Um, applied for £300 and the recommendation £300. Again, no hands, so I'll just approve the £300. Agreed. Okay, application E is Colburn Brass Band Family. Um, and again, for an outing, um, they applied for £1,000. And the recommendation for this one was £600, Chair. Thanks, Carol. I don't see any hands on this one either. So um, the recommendation is for £600. I'll approve that. Okay. Agreed. Thank you, Chair. Um, application F is Lanark Agricultural Discussion Society. Again, for an outing. Um, applied for £300 and the recommendation is £300. Again, no hands, so I'll approve that. Agreed. G, we have dealt with application H is Kirstair Senior Citizens Association. Um, purpose of grant for this one was an outing and materials costs. Um, Grant applied for is £455 and the recommendation was £395. Yeah. Thanks, Carol. I actually thought we'd rounded that up to 400 to be honest. I should have maybe paid more. 393 and we rounded it to, to 395. Right, that's, I knew there was a round up here. So um, I don't see any hands, so I'll approve that. Thanks, so 395. Okay, agreed. Okay, and the last application on the list for this one is um, Bigger and District Community Heritage. Um, and this was for equipment, environmental project, 
and administration and publicity costs. Um, grant applied for is £500 and the recommendation is £400, Chair. Again, I don't see any hands, uh, so I'll approve the 400. Agreed. Thank you, Chair. So the um, other recommendation in the report is um, just to note the community grants that were dealt with by the Executive Director in consultation with the Chair um, for the grants that were applied for in the period from the last area committee to the end of the financial year, and they are detailed in Appendix 1. Thanks, Carol. Um, well, I don't know whether I... Can I approve my own? <laughs> yeah. yeah, OK, I'll approve that. Agreed. Just for nodding, so agreed, yeah. OK, um, I don't know whether you're still with us, David, but... Um, hope you are. Anyway, I have no urgent business, so I'd like to thank you all for attending the Clydesdale Area Committee today, and I'll see you around. Bye. Oh, have a happy Lanimers. <laughs> <laughs>